300 men. At the beginning of this series, going through the book of Judges, I gave you a challenge to stay up with us and learn the names of the judges of this book. I say judges of this book rather than the judges of Israel, like many people say, because there were many judges of Israel, not just these. Matter of fact, even during the time of judges, there were more than just these people here. Every major city and town would have judges. Even the small villages would have uh, somebody, like I mentioned about the old wise woman. Uh, uh, anyone who could settle disputes between people and bring about justice, they were, they were judges. But in this book, there are several major ones that are mentioned because of the great deeds that they did. Well, uh, Othniel was the first one, and after that was Ehud, the left-handed judge. Then you have uh, Shamgar, which was up in the Galilee area. After that, Deborah. And now, Gideon. Well, actually, if you just learn two more, maybe three, you'll have all of the major ones. You have Jephna, which we'll deal with later, and Samson. I mentioned possibly three because Abimelech uh, technically is considered a judge. He declared himself king, which means he judged the people at least for three years. Uh, but maybe not. You know, I guess we'll have to throw him in there to learn three, the, 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 those three more and you'll have an A on your report card. If you're one of those who just insist upon having an A+, plus, well then, well, there are a few more judges to learn on top of these. Well, Gideon. Gideon was from the tribe of Manasseh. He, after all this is over, he actually helped to bring about the worship of idols again. But there was a natural tendency anyway, because the people here were farmers. And they wanted a kind of a good luck for the weather and crops. There was a particular idol which was popular um, among them and even after all that God did they they would go back and have these idols again it was called Baal of the Covenant this was the good luck charm this was the idol that was in charge of uh, weather uh, rain and dew matter of fact when when uh, God put the dew on the fleece that actually was a slam uh, against the uh, Baal of the covenant. God saying, no, no, I'm the one that controls rain and dew. All this happens in the Jezreel Valley. Oh, what a place. Uh, during our trip to Israel, we have crisscrossed back and forth across this valley. So many Bible stories happen right here. In fact, this battle here takes place right around Mount Tabor which was where Barak led his army and defeated the Canaanite king. But so many other stories too. Matter of fact, King Saul and his son were killed on Mount Gilboa, which is right in this same area. The Shudamite woman, Shudam, just crossed the valley there. Elisha would go back and forth up through this valley. Matter of fact, where Shudam is at on the other side is Endor, where the witch of Endor was located where Saul went. You have uh, Jezreel, where King Ahab and Jezebel lived, or their summer palace. And uh, Jehu came and killed Jezebel and a couple of kings. It's just so many things. Matter of fact, at the end of the valley towards the Mediterranean is Mount Carmel, where Elijah met the prophets of, of Baal. This whole valley in fact, is also called Armageddon. But right up as you go up from the valley, up on those mountains right there, you see a, t a city up at the top. At the time, it was just a village. It's called Nazareth, where Jesus was raised. Well, Gideon takes his men to the springs of Herod. Uh, the springs of Herod, we take people there during our trips to Israel, especially at the heat of the day. It's great to put their feet down in this, in, in this spring where all, all this happened. As a matter of fact, there's one part that's dammed up. You can actually go swimming. 
but it is just a wonderful place to, to go. And I, we often try to take our lunch and have our lunch right there. Uh, when God, he said to Gideon, I want you to go down and listen to the many nights talk. And if you're afraid, take your servant with you. <laughs> no doubt about that. Grabs the servant and said, okay, let's go. Now, the dream that the Midianite man had about the barley that was rolling down the hill and hits a tent, it wasn't hard to interpret what that was, well, what that meant. See, this is a conflict between the nomad uh, herdsman and the farmer. The farmer lived on the land and had harvest year after year, and, and, the, and making the barley loaves was a part of the farmer's life. That was, that was Israeli, that was a farmer. And the tent represented the herdsmen, the nomads. So the, and Gideon was going to come down the hill right enough when he attacked. So all of this made sense to the people of that day. Years later, Isaiah would refer back to this time. Isaiah said the day will come when in many nights, once again, with their massive amount of tents, their hordes of camels will come to the land. But this time, they will come to worship the Lord. Come back when we give you more insights on the story.